Now, let me to take a step back um, and share with you uh, the story how this journey began. Um, I have always considered myself a very privileged person. Um, I grew up in a family uh, with very strong values. I have a restless mother uh, who's still running her own pastry and ice cream business, uh, and who from a very young age has been the caretaker of Christina, my sister uh, who was born with a severe brain paralysis. So my mom has truly become uh, my role model, my role model for perseverance, uh, hard work, and commitment. Um, this is Kauka. You saw a little bit of this on the video. Um, where I grew up is a southern rural state uh, in Colombia, um, a, region, a region that is gifted with uh, breathtaking landscapes and natural resources. Um, and it was there where I had the opportunity uh, to connect with nature and agriculture. Um, but the story of my hometown uh, has not always been idyllic. Um, Cauca is known as a red zone, um, an area most affected by violence related to the Colombia Civil War, um, where over the 60 years, uh, the Colombian governments, paramilitary groups, um, crime syndicates, and FARC left guerrillas such as the FARC that you might have heard of, uh, each fought to increase their influence in the Colombian territory. Uh, these are Wambiano women, um, and they are native to my homeland of Cauca. Um, and this picture tells a very profound story. The constant struggle for power and lack of peace and equality that halts development and takes away opportunities from those who need them the most. I knew changes needed to happen in Colombia to build a more equitable future. But as a young man, I couldn't yet see what my role was to make a difference. So after graduating from university, I pursued my dream job uh, and went working for the National Federation of Coffee Growers of Colombia, which is the largest coffee exporter in Colombia and the largest or one of the largest uh, cooperatives in the world uh, and has a mission to improve the livelihoods of hundreds of thousands of coffee growing families throughout Colombia. And after seeing the transformation in agri product like coffee could have in my country, I started to think again of those Wambiano women who wanted to live in peace. Um, so I'd had the dream to transform the cacao sector in Colombia, cacao, the main ingredient of chocolate, to, a, to add value to a crop grown in some of Colombia's most remote and dangerous places a crop had, that had the potential to become even more relevant than coffee to bring people out of poverty. And then, in the spring of 2009, almost 10 years ago, while looking at a perfect cherry blossom, I had the idea to create Cacao de Colombia and start my own journey as an agricultural entrepreneur, what I call an agripreneur. Um, I don't know how I explained to my parents that I had decided to quit my prestigious and well-paying job to pursue my dream of transforming the cacao sector in Colombia. But in my heart, I knew that it was time to use all the tools I had and to walk the path nobody had walked before. Um, Colombia has been in war since I can remember. Um, there have been more difficult times than others, but the reality is at the end, a vicious cycle where the lack of opportunities and education for so many people, mainly in the rural areas, becomes a perfect nest for guerrilla groups, criminal gangs and drug cartels to flourish, not only preventing the government and the private sector from investing in these regions, but also forcing the government to spend scarce resources in an endless war. This cycle repeats itself over and over, leaving every time a bigger scar more difficult to heal. It is hard to believe that this picture and the last were taken a few kilometers away from each other. It is like peeling off the burnt skin of an onion that has been left on the fire for too long just to discover an untouched heart. Tumaco is one of the regions that has suffered the most during these years of conflict. Several rivers come down from the mountains to meet the Pacific Ocean, shaping on its way a region full of mangroves and rainforests. 
This paradise has been neglected by the Colombian government for decades, and most Colombians wouldn't dare to visit it. It is also a perfect scenario for the drug business to, to flourish. Coca, and just to be clear with my accent here, not to confuse it with cacao. <laughs> <laughs> Coca is used to produce cocaine, grows very well here. Um, and the rivers and dense vegetation make it very easy to hide. Uh, and the ocean connecting it with the world is just right there. There is no rule of order, and those who suffer the most are the farmers who are forced by the lack of opportunities and the lack of a fair market for their crops to plant coca, just to see their lands mercilessly fumigated by airplanes, spraying, spraying glyphosate that will kill nature on its path, making farmers poorer and less optimistic with life than they were before. But there are people who make a mark in history. And Gustavo, he's definitely one of them. He's the leader of Corte Paz, one of the associations that grows specialty cacaos in Tumaco. Gustavo took a bold decision uh, by working with us back in 2011 when we were looking to, for partners to implement a model we believed could revolutionize the cacao industry in that region. Gustavo is the third generation of a, a cacao growing family, holds a bachelor degree in business, and just like me, he decided to go back home and become an agropreneur himself. The opportunity to make change and transform this region was there, but it was not going to be easy to make Colombia a producer, a producer of specialty cacaos and craft chocolates. For decades, Colombia's cacao market has been dominated by two very large buyers without a focus on quality, meaning farmers were receiving a fluctuating price for a commodity rather than a stable and high price for a specialty crop. So here we were, establishing Cacao de Colombia with no volume to change the market, a market that was unfair to the farmers, that wasn't capturing all the possible value for some of the best cacaos in the world. We needed champions within the regions, like Gustavo and Hernan, who you just met in the video, who were willing to walk with us that extra mile to produce a high quality product. We would find the resources to build the necessary infrastructure to produce high quality cacao, provide support to farmers to maximize the quality of their crop, and offer farmers a guaranteed price for the product, something they never had before. But being a successful entrepreneur, sorry, requires a very perseverant and self-motivating personality, a clear goal and the right partners. It was difficult for me to realize when things were going south with the business and pressing challenges kept me away at night, that at the end, I was alone. And I needed to find the right partners who could help me, help, who could help me make this dream come true. I found that partner in Acumen. We shared the same dream. This picture was taken two years ago during the inauguration of our new factory in, Mon in my homeland of Cauca. Christian was there with us that day. Um, and thanks to Acumen, investment, we were able to build this factory serving the cacao producers we have worked with over the years, such as the Aruacos and the cacao growers from Tumaco, and has allowed us to purchase more cacao from these regions and put Colombia in the cacao map. So we work with our new state-of-the-art factory in high-quality cacaos from across Colombia, but the final step to transform this cacao sector in Colombia was to find the right customers. So we pretty much have everything, but we needed to find the customers to buy our product. Um, and I'm very pleased to share with you that we, ha we have just launched a partnership with Crepes and Waffles. A Crepes and Waffles, a major food and ice cream chain from Colombia, a company with a very deep focus on quality and sustainability. A partnership that is allowing us to maintain a stable purchase of cacao at constant high prices from Tumaco. We, we have increased the production of our factory now for three consecutive months. The uh, study that Acumen recently did to assess the impact um, that our work is having on our cacao suppliers has shown great results. Um, we've seen an increase between 58 and 75% uh, in net farmers' income, which is incredible. Um, but what the numbers do not tell uh, is the relationship of equals and trust 
we have been able to build with the communities we work with. Most of farmers we work with belong to ethnic groups that have developed mistrust over centuries with us, little brothers, result of a ruthless conquest from Spain that slaughtered Indians and slave Africans. We treasure very much the trust both the Arhuacos and Tumaqueños have in us. Last year, we invited Gustavo to Japan to receive the gold and silver medals from the International Chocolate Awards for our chocolates made with his cacao, a major achievement. These awards are powerful, not only because they help to market our chocolates, but most importantly, because they create a sense of pride for the cacao producing tomaco, who little by little are replacing, and I quote a friend here, the bitter taste of coca leaves with the sweet taste of chocolate. <laughs>